Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Be very careful so that we never get to points where we become too familiar with the dealings of God. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up. That means that when you get to a point where truly in experience you understand the ways of God, chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God and it's not it's not a state that may be done intentionally usually the Bible calls it the pride of life the pride of life is different from pride the pride of life is the self glorification that comes in the face of obvious results if you don't have results you cannot have the pride of life you can have pride but not the pride of life and I know that God has helped us and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements achievements are important but they can be very destructive very destructive hallelujah and so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open and the lord will help us in jesus name amen and amen i want to teach on something very powerful i i believe with all my heart um, if we're not able to finish it tonight we can continue um perhaps after the miracle service but um you know we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about God and the methodology please I want you to listen very carefully there is a formula for knowing God that means that the pathway to the knowledge of God is not one that is dependent on creativity i've taught you and it will i will continue to repeat it again and again that when it has to do with your walking with god creativity is not required what is required is obedience and alignment you are not at liberty to choose your pathway you are not at liberty to choose your formula it is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know God that privilege was never given to the saints at no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing God are we together creativity only becomes useful when that kingly dimension when it has to do with the revelation to creation now to creation that's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion but as far as our work with god and our spiritual growth is concerned we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway the bible says ask for the ancient path and when you find it walk in it that means that your creativity is not required 
I say this because the man, please listen, man is like, is like a raw material. Are we together? And there is a process that God leads man through. And the object, what man should become, is already known in the heart of the Father. Are we together? And the Bible does not even hide it. He already tells us who and what we should be like. That means at the end of our journey, we should become like an embodiment that is personified in Jesus the Christ. Are we together now? So you pass a product from one end of the, the machine or whatever it is, and then you already have an expectation that if done well, this is what should happen. When a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook, he or she already has an idea, are we together, of what the meal should become. There is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards, a clear picture of what the meal should become. You don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be. From the start, you already know. Are we together? Now, many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what, because of the kind of combination. But at the end, you must know what you should be. When a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another the pilot although the pilot may not see where he's going most of the time the pilot already knows that i'm flying from lagos to abuja i'm flying from lagos to kaduna and so on and so forth it is not only god that wants to that should know what we should be even the be should have an idea of what he should become transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference you cannot become nothing so your transformation must be based on a reference i can tell you why many believers do not grow because one we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth Number two, we do not even have an idea. We know in theory that we should be like, like telling me that I should be, I should be like um, so, 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 and so person. And now I don't know that person. So how can I know what, if you tell me to dress, promise, please stand. If you tell me to dress like promise, right? I will have to come. I will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing are we together but if i have not been able to see promise i do not know him it's going to be difficult for me it's a standard that is almost impossible not because the raw materials are out of reach but there is no reference so the bible says looking up to jesus and he calls jesus not just savior jesus has many names in the bible and one of the names as far as our transformation is concerned is the author and the finisher of our faith meaning that when you come into the faith life the kingdom life your gaze should continually be on jesus to refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere to set your gaze and focus on Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that now the Lord is that spirit, right? He says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then the Bible goes further to say now we all with unveiled face, beholding him, not them, not it money is it fame is it are we together promotion is it the bible says don't behold it you will get it but the object of your focus is beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other ever increasing glory even as by the spirit of the lord so the moment i set my gaze on jesus christ 
no matter what it is that happens once my gaze is fixed on him there is an assurance that eventually i will begin to look like the one that i'm gazing at and as far as i've read my bible i do not see anything in jesus that is not de desirable by men is it the crown upon his head is it the brightness of his glory is it the majesty that surrounds his throne the bible says if i look at it you know we want the things that are on in and around jesus and we want to get them looking away from him focusing on those things the throne room is a place of wealth and abundance the throne room is a place of majesty and splendor the throne room is a place of excellence the throne room is a place of power and so when i fix my eyes on jesus sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man but then you are becoming him but not just him generically you are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing are we together so i fix my eyes on jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my influence i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my understanding i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my authority he says looking up to jesus and if you do not have an idea of who that jesus is then it is dangerous because there are many things if no one ever tried to be jesus or god in the bible it would be easy but now there are many gods in the bible and there are many saviors supposedly that means if you don't know the one you are looking for someone else can substitute him and say i am god and you will innocently look up to that person or that thing believing you are looking at god and you will be changed into that thing it's only that at the end you will look at your life and say this was not how i started there will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life are we together so pray a prayer before i start open my eyes oh lord grant me the miracle of open eyes hmm open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are open hallelujah listen let me tell you this before we get to the word the more i know god and the more i study scripture the more i know what our problem is as men let me tell you one of the major problems of men we think revelation is something you get are we together we know that our lives are dependent on the light we have there is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light everywhere in scripture is light coming listen very carefully for as long as you believe you have the power to get light then the light of god will never come these truths that we teach they are very exact it's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you don't forget this scripture a man can receive nothing a man can receive nothing receive nothing until it is given what god does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand so th there's no point seeking around your assignment when the bible says seek and you will find the idea is not to go around the word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were is really the word position yourself it's more of a posture than it is of a searching there are things you can never see by studies no 
this is beyond the realm of education this is beyond the realm of intellect although your intellect will participate in communicating it but it does not come from the realm of intellect there is a wisdom that is sophia human wisdom is a product of age and your exposure to science but there is a wisdom that comes from above are we together now so I, I i need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn true revelation comes you are made a partaker you fellowship with that mystery it's a fellowship you are called into it that's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom the dimension of this it's ancient is older than you predates you predates your christian experience and even predates your level of spiritual exposure it tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older higher and more superior than you so really the prayer is not to to search around the prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you but when that light comes to you and you receive it according to the authority of scripture the bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes you can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life i will continue to teach us that our lives not necessarily immediately but our lives with time and that time is not forever and that time is not your lifetime your lifetime is too long with time because we operate by times and seasons it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day no you are not living in the realm of eternity you are living in the realm of time so many things in your life are time dependent they are time dependent for three reasons one there is a spiritual law called the law of process and so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by god your being serious with god or not cannot increase the speed it will happen within that time then there there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience so you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insight that comes to you and the application of that truth and then of course time can be regulated based on the hindrances the spiritual hindrances are we together yes and the spiritual hindrances are only three number one covenants number two disobedience number three um what's the third one demonic attack the devil can hinder you i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us so satan can hinder men so i don't expect that pastor femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture no matter how accurate i do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight in fact in fact if that happens to you is proof that something went wrong and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men are we together ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me you would have just said all over the earth but he broke it into dimensions jerusalem samaria judea and to the utmost part of the earth so it's very very important but let me submit to you ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation if they are honest enough with you they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture the study of scripture is important it helps to prime your spirit man 
like you prime a pump but the real revelation comes from God to you it comes as light and then depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates God does not speak English God does not speak Greek he doesn't speak French he doesn't speak Spanish or Hausa or English he speaks light his language is light are we together yes and the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man so when that light comes upon your spirit man you have it but then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed remember the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required they are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit otherwise there will be no need for transformation once that light comes upon you that's enough but you need it translated here and now are we together and that technology of transfer is what we must learn the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know so you begin to have understanding and when you have understanding i've taught you that this body does not have power on its own are we together when your spirit leaves your body you are called dead dead means that your body is inactive so the body is a slave somewhat or better still the body is an executor the assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit your soul whatever your body decides i mean whatever your spirit man decides or whatever is decided in the solical realm your body is now authorized to execute it so if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny the problem is not the body the problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit and if you are a believer then the problem is not from your spirit man the problem is from the solical realm that's where the battle is now why because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are, are you getting this listen what i'm showing you now are these are the fundamentals of christianity it's important that you know them it's amazing how many believers get born again and they are absolutely clueless about the faith life and we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths because we do not guide believers methodically we just randomly bring truths anyhow and so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive there is no synergy in their growth they cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience so they have many experiences but they are disjointed I can't see the relevance of this topic to this one there should be a sequence are we together yes there should be a sequence to your spiritual growth that means that come my dear that means I should be able to teach you something now and then you come you should hold her hands you should be able to connect what I taught you are we together like a ladder it should lead you to the next you stand here level of life and then I should connect you this is how growth happens if your truths are not sequential you will get a lot of spiritual information but not coordinated enough to reveal Christ in your life this is the tragedy of many believers so when I switch on your laptop I see many sermons I see many topics I see many um, exegesis of scripture theological dissertations that have come from different people different schools of ministry and so on and so forth and on the abundance of those information you can pride yourself to believe you are growing but the problem is that truths were supplied but not sequentially arranged 
Are we together? So somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about prosperity. You don't know where it fits in the graph. Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about character. Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about service in the house of God. Are we together? Somewhere, come, in your spiritual life, they taught you about demonology, deliverance, warfare. Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about prayer. Are, 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 you, are you following me now? Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about whatever it is. Now, these informations are all useful. But you find out that you have them. Yet your life does not testify that you have light. The problem is not the scarceness of light. The problem is the sequential arrangement of truth. Notice how Jesus began to teach the people. Jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the Beatitudes. It was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life. Gradually he began to lead them. Then he started getting deeper. He got to a point that was so deep, people ran away. And he said, will you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. By the time we get to John 14, 15, he's now introducing the Holy Spirit. Never did he introduce the Holy Spirit before that time. Then he got to a point where Jesus himself was almost frustrated. He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell this is where the problem is there is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time it may just be in a more with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess but the central thought is almost always known yet our results our lives are not looking for new things our lives are looking for a rearrangement a sequential arrangement something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you are you getting what i'm saying now something that you should not hear there there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success and since you did not hear it what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you It is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets. Are we together? And evangelists and pastors and teachers. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, for the equipping, the perfecting. The word perfecting there is the maturing of the saints. When you give birth to a baby, a number of us here have children. At the back, we have our lovely children they are enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um, cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive to someone else that's an answered prayer at a level you will sit down and pray and god will supply but now cow tail will be required in that baby's life but somewhere but now when you give the child cow tail you give the child every kind of thing you will soon find out that your child is dead what killed the child food food did you ever learn that food can kill it's not only poison that kills it is not only wrong things that kill good things not arranged sequentially can kill the prosperity of fools shall destroy them 
it is not the prosperity is that that guy was a fool he needed to be wise first so you the word of god that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom and what is wisdom the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of god you watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes what i'm sharing is powerful this is not even my message I, I don't know how i got here but this is powerful sometimes the lord just distracts us like that to speak to people it can be a prophetic word for someone that look 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 your journey of ever learning your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will full frustrate you because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge but the little he has was so sequentially arranged his life will show that he's growing properly So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. He said, I know this is the record. Look, look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits. The person who is talking now does not have transport back home. Now, I'm, I'm not talking of initial. I don't ever blame any Christian when it does not have results from the instance. It is okay and it is normal but when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness then it's proof that something is wrong and we can easily diagnose the problem number one will be to check in the area of ignorance if we find out that ignorance is not the problem then number two we will check the quality of the information be careful less what you call light be darkness so you can call darkness light isaiah chapter 9 when you read i think verse 2 or thereabout i can't remember it says the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light until the great light came they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness it says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death upon them a light has come we can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man there are other lights that cannot light any man they can light other things but they can't light men animals have a principle that they work with is that true most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to God so the principle there is not an invention of science it is God's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well. But because we are the highest of God's creation, many of those truths, they are truths, but not applicable to us. There are some of those truths that are applicable to us. That's why God punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom. He said, go and study my ways as given to the ants. You are a lazy man. You are a sluggard. You are reducing yourself through laziness. So I refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom study the ants that they do not have a king they do not have this kind of organization so when you study you come back every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm they were degraded nebuchadnezzar was turned into what what was he turned into for seven years only his brain was left the brain of a man but every other thing was that of a beast and there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man 
So when he became a beast, he learned that lesson. At the end of seven years, Nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to. He exalted the name of the Lord. Are we together now? They know not, neither will they understand. 82 and verse 5 of Psalms. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, or I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the most high. The next verse is a tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So the tragedy, please hear me again. Sometimes, there are times that it's just plain ignorance. Are we together? But there are times that it is not ignorance. It is the inability to sequentially arrange truth. Many years ago, the Lord did something in my life it's a personal dealing so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of um the lord prohibited me from studying my bible for one week complete one week that's why i said it's a personal dealing yours may be an attack don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because god did not tell you yours is laxity that's why i said it's a personalized dealings satan uses words to deceive men ye are clean through the word that i've spoken to you for one week i did not read my bible not because i didn't want to i didn't understand the morale of the dealing until i was done and this was the whole object behind it the, the, the entire focus the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where i would realize that i was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth. Are we together? Yes. So I was getting, you know, those days, well, now we're still passionate about God, but there's something about the journey of a believer. It's like marathon. Once they blow the whistle on your mark, get set, ready sometimes you are even your, your blood is as hot as whatever go and you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door so that zeal that fire greek this concordance lexicon you know just study anything once you see a strange word ah pneumatology okay this is i should add this very quickly homiletics homiletics ah. so we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation spiritual but scattered and the rate of change versus the the effort was not commensurate and it was a call for concern and so god was trying to save me trouble i would have been in big trouble now let me tell you why many christians are angry and don't believe that others are using God's power entirely. I'll tell you why. They are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive, to, to take one step. It's like they did a labor of five years. So when they see you soaring in the spirit, they say something is wrong. Something is wrong. I started learning 10 years, 7 years, 5 years ago and you just came and right now in 2 years, you are in this level. Not so. One of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again, God plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence, enough balance. Huh? Spiritual intelligence and balance. These two things. Grace and truth. When it is grace alone, you are in trouble. When it is truth alone, you are still in trouble. It is full of grace and truth so when god plants you under a ministry or under a man of god many of us the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation the real tragedy now i say that respectfully was probably the spiritual system you were planted in 
when you got born again because your zeal made your heart open for any information unfortunately many of us received chaffs it didn't kill you but you were not healthy either because the prodigal son ate the food of of pigs he didn't die but you can't say he was healthy that's how it is spiritually please listen very carefully shepherds can destroy people how did moses find a wife read your bible it was shepherds that came to drive the women remember the family where moses's wife came from they were shepherds the women will come to feed their cattle and those shepherds will come to drive them and fetch water and moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people it is important there are shepherds that watch their flock by night but there are shepherds that kill their flocks he said i will give you pastors after my own heart please listen to this because tomorrow you'll be the one mentoring a lot of people spiritual growth is a school it's a school with an exact curriculum that god will help you the sequential revelation of truth matters it does i'm telling you this there are many things we know about god that are wrong there are many things we don't know about god that should be known the dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities i used to think it's faith but it's not faith faith is simply the credit card that you use but what really pays for it is light It, from the abundance of these things then you will know who god is and you can worship him in spirit and in truth there are things you can know about god that makes you unbendable immovable nobody comes to sway you to and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says it's important now before i get to my sermon this is this i can't believe that i've still not started preaching look at these people please start look at these people which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again they were just born in a family just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe so they started like that they started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um assistant music director are you seeing that now from assistant music director you became music director from music director you became deacon Huh? yes from deacon they open a branch just where you are graduating and they call you pastor whoever you are now the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown according to god's order there is a pattern god is a god of patterns he's not just a god of motion he's a god of patterns how you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart now this is the interesting thing about god even when you think you have been working with god like we arrogantly say for 15 years the day he reveals himself to you he will rearrange your life back and sometimes when he he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire it's in the bible that means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his light will come and all that will be left is your true state that means God will say you men say you are in level 5 you level 15 but really you are just at level 1 now you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or 
allow the ego that you have to just make you continue yes lord yes lord you are the king there is none other yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord you are the king there is none other yes lord yes lord yes lord so men can call you emoji men can call you deacon men can call you this and that but the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern i hate to be a bearer of bad news but let me tell you you are only wasting your time when god comes he never continues from where, what you were doing look at what happened to abraham when he met abraham at all of the chaldeans this was his instruction abraham come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred i hope you know at that time abraham was not a failure at least he had some results he had 200 plus servants he had cattle he had a number of things and said abraham don't think i'm coming to continue from there i will start with you again let's start that journey this is what brought some of you here some of you are already pastors men of god leaders some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission you carried youth pastor mentality and just came and god said no way come and sit down and if you are not careful and please every pastor here this this are not vice don't just see someone come because they said he came from so 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 ministry or so 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 parish and in that parish he was the music director and you just say, okay no problem come and sit down and play keyboard and the guy comes with that celebrity mindset because in his church spiritual growth is not necessary in his church just attendance and loyalty is what is and, and sowing of seeds here and there but now this requirement requires you to sit down many celebrities get born again i mean secular celebrities now they get born again and come to church and then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it not god you are joking not god mm -mm. not god not the god of the heavens when you come everybody starts from class one even jesus when he came the father didn't even pity jesus to say okay you are jesus i mean this is me he started right from scratch at age 12 i imagine what was in the mind of jesus when he was reading himself thou shall love the lord your god and the rabbis were saying i hope you are learning it and he was just watching the force that holds what he's reading and not even jesus was promoted like that he had to wait at age 12 he was learning what do you think you are to just jump the steps favor does not jump steps so you hear that because our idea of shortcut must be balanced favor is shortcut yes but it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear favor is a system that was designed to help you because men do not start life in an ideal way please listen if i was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday the good old graph of life if you are not part of school of ministry join even if it's just because of that if you don't change after that teaching i don't know what will change you in this life again the graph of life are we together if i get born again 40 years how many of you know that i'm blessed but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time we don't have forever on earth now i got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age three who has more advantage than the other 
And don't say we are all equal. You are not equal. This guy has time. Time. At age three, born again. At age four, filled with the Holy Ghost. At age five, being mentored by a visionary father. When that child becomes 12, he is now you of 70 at age 12. Now listen, let me show you, listen, listen, don't just laugh. Let me show you the relevance of things like mercy, favor. These things are not just random things. God looked at the way man works on earth and said, if I don't add these other things, man will never become the fullness of God's grace. So here and there, he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you. This is where things like favor are important. If you don't have favor in life, you, you will succeed. The problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal. Nobody's life is ideal, including Jesus. They hid Jesus because somebody wanted to kill him. Until Herod died. And he said, okay, now you can go. There were things he would have been doing within that time. Mephibosheth, because a midwife... I, I, I'm, am I alone in this place this night? Mephibosheth was a sincere person. The midwife that held him was careless. And because of her carelessness, that guy fell down and broke his leg. Now, sorry would not solve that problem. Because there are things he will never be able to do. So how does God help this man's destiny? By allowing him to live life the way it should be? So God introduces things like mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy. And looks at him God. And he knows. He looks at the way man should go. And looks at the way man goes. This guy was called to be a prophet to the nations. This is his destiny. Are we together now? According to God's predeterminate counsel. The destiny of this gentleman. Like Jeremiah. Is to be a prophet to the nations. But it so happened that the womb that would give birth to him married an unbeliever. Now listen to this. I hope you know this is not his fault. It's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled now got married to a non-Christian. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Now this guy, according to the blueprint of his life, he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at 1. But because of what he has to fight, an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here. And that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first. And listen to me. Sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university. So his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get to university? 17. This guy has to wait for 17 years. Are you getting the point now? Because according to God's blueprint, that is the safest way for him to live. If he lives in a way that they, they can kill him, and God, for the sake of his destiny, will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you will find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. 
I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you. And the problem is not only an attack. An attack looks like the obvious reason. But I'm telling you now, there is no prophet, no pastor, no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes. No. You want holistic growth? We must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong. Back to my story. This gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from God and far from destiny. Are we together? Now he gets to the university after 17 years. 17 years has been wasted. When he gets there now, the devil will try to do all kinds of things. For instance, the devil can ensure that his first CGPA is 1.2. 1. point what? Who will listen to God under that kind of condition? The pressure from life will make him say, do you know what? Let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished. Now, it doesn't mean, please, I hope you understand that I'm not being sarcastic to any... The fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you, you call it circumstances, but these are intentional orchestrations. And then this gentleman one day, that's why inviting people to the house of God, if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving, then it is evil to not invite people. This is not the issue of evangelism. This is you being an extension of God's mercy. Because the person you will be inviting, you think you are just inviting, you don't know you are acting prophecy. Imagine that this guy now is in Zaria in this situation. Imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to Koinonia. You thought you just invited a man, but you literally shifted a destiny. Literally. Because of one encounter. Are you with me this night now? It's very important. Some of you are now seeing. Now, do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes? You have invited five, six people. But all of them don't have the same destiny. This guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Did you really invite one person? How many people did you invite? He will give you flimsy excuse. Uh, excuses. I've not eaten. And the Holy Ghost will say, feed him. And you are like, Holy Spirit, what is all this one? I don't have transport. And you bring him. Now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then I'm not ready working for others. The moment you enter, accept your feet that something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. No problem. I don't know who prayed for you before you arrived. But let me tell you sincerely. If you know that there was no salvation in your past, please hear what I'm saying seriously and pay attention to it. Altars are wicked. They are like time. Nothing can fight them. They will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you. Hallelujah. I heard of a man of God that bought truck, this Dangote truck. They kept advising him to diversify. And that guy carried all his money. I don't know how much that truck is, but it's so expensive. The moment the person bought that truck, I, I, he was coming along, I think Kogi or so, the road. That was how that thing just capsized. It burnt in a way, burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man. And the guy sat down and was almost killing himself. Who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon 
because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth there are men of god and there are churches that are wonderful but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth no the context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave birth to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you will just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we're making in ministry now we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that you arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for any man who intends to be changed to be lifted and to become great in life and destiny Halabaranda kaprakato sepeles.
pray, pray, pray. Shele parakato jambrakata. My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray. Please pray. Destiny. In the name of Jesus, be open. Shekete kaparaka to pareketa, embrata leka paroda shalaka tabariata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Open up, open up, open up in the name of Jesus. Open up, open up. Open up in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life, rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open, I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. 
pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment you are not supposed to be looking for money now you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply there are people right now at according to god's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here god cannot move with you hear me hear me there are ladies according to god's blueprint you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people. You need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it all. Because you were supposed to pray only an hour. Because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen, listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families, according to the design of God, you are supposed to be three men, but the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up, sometimes as the last born. And now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man. There are families. It's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord. Or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change. But his purposes remain eternal. Listen, listen, there are families, according to God's design, you should never even try to say, okay, I'm looking for two or three jobs. Because according to that design, your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance. But now the devil hijacked that destiny. And the way you are right now, if you fail, there is no more hope for your family. Because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then i will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone Jesus over my family. If it depends on me, I will not fail. Someone pray. 
pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind pray with the picture of your children on your mind pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind if it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point, we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time. But you see, there's something about destiny. There are people when the devil wants to waste their time, they will get American visa and travel and roam around America. Just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny. Look at how God brought some of you here. God carried you from different places. It's destiny. Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions you would think is promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not I pray by the Spirit in this season, take me there. Take me there. I should not be at this level. In ministry, financially, maritally, spiritually, pray 
by your spirit bring acceleration to my life there is no more time to waste the voice of my generation is crying speedy manifestation oh god of all that pertains to my destiny in this season Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. The next prayer point, I will have to teach you a little to understand. Covenants are systems of advantage. Please listen. A covenant is more than an agreement. It's a system that provides an advantage in life. Listen to me carefully. You reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have. Are we together now? Yes. Advantage. Every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the Bible, you must study it. Everybody rose based on an advantage. Joshua stood before Jericho helpless like any leader would be, except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation Abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that God's people would be in captivity for 400 years. Please listen to me. This thing I'm teaching you is a deep teaching. Your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage. I repeat, the knowledge of God is not based on covenant. Your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage. Are we together? And there are many systems of advantage. I hope that in the coming weeks, just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn. An advantage. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. She looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, You come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah! I wish we could deal with this because you see a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God God's dimensions are stored in his names I came with a name are we together now and foolish Goliath instead of him to ask are you a Jew he kept quiet what do you think made Jericho to close their gate they said who are the guys coming to attack us the moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. 
and based on those systems of advantage i tell you they can fail in other things not finances no they can make the most stupid financial decisions yet what they stand upon will bail them out have you seen families like that all their children must be leaders must be leaders it doesn't matter what happens whether it's a village school or whatever the girl must be head girl the boy must be head boy. in a class of many people eventually they will be leaders when you say the jf kennedy family what comes to your mind there are families that are a dynasty it's not just business they were passing there were platforms whether with fraternity with satan or fraternity with god but there was a system of advantage i will never forget i've always been a very brilliant person i remember i was in jazz one this issue changed my life i had always been the best student effortlessly the best in fact, I didn't know that people used to read during exams. Nobody ever asked me to go and read. If you were in my class, just give up. In terms of position, you are wasting your time. It's not only that I will take first. The gap I will give you will make you not to come near me again. And something happened. When I was in secondary school, the first time I was the best student. The second time, I think I was the best student also. But the third time, the guy that took that before the parents moved to living faith listen oh they moved to living faith it didn't reach three months they did anointing service for that boy straight when he came and wrote exams when that now this is not about first or second i'm just using it to explain something when the results came out and i looked at my result i looked at the guy it, it wasn't you know i didn't know what i knew now you can imagine a small boy i said no something is wrong something has to be wrong because my best performance was this point something has to be wrong that guy was his average was just with like five marks i said no there has to be a recalculation something is wrong and then i met him i said in the spirit of sportsmanship congratulations and he laughed he told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith i said what is living faith it was later when i understood i said ah i was standing on my brain he was standing on an altar listen sir let me do this come tell us your testimony now everybody stand and listen to this testimony Go ahead. Um, I am a pastor. I was in Mubi before we got transferred to Abuja. Because of the distance and the financial constraint, we decided that my wife would not return back to school. So during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam, she didn't go. And then we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service uh, last month. And then we the resolved that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Or, what, what second semester? Semester. Because of, listen, because of financial constraint, which is justifiable. They now came down he relocated and then when all of that happened he now planned because he had been i've been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen Bishop Oyedeko, listen, one man of God in the south-south, he was about to start ministry, and then he went to Bishop Oyedeko for prayer and advice, as you know, they were releasing him. 
and Bishop Oedipo spoke to him in Yoruba. I wish I'm a Yoruba person. He said, never fight alone. That's my advice for you. Never fight alone. I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life. So, the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register. Now that God has helped them, things have started changing. I'm explaining the story for you. They now went and said, okay, let's see how far. As they printed results, second semester result, A and B parallel. That's what came out as the wife's result. This man is a pastor. He has a congregation. He's a spiritual father to many. He will not come and mess up his integrity. And he's, this is a father with a wife and children. Listen, it is not to endorse laziness, but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities, limited only by your spiritual understanding. God bless you, son. We are going to round up. But let's, we are going to pray this prayer. Systems of advantage. Abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called Or of the Chaldeans. Chaldeans were, were idol worshippers. They were necromancers. When God called him out, it still was not enough. God met him and said, I need to enter a covenant with you. If I just call you and I say, let's go to the promised land, you will still die. I have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order. Are we together? Many of you do not know that the secret to the future, you've heard me say it, is in the past. Before you move forward in life, you have to go backwards. Please hear what I'm saying. All these names that we have given this phenomena in life, they are, whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough, whether you call it spirit husband, whether you call it spirit wife, whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. Listen, there are things that God does for the sake of the fathers. There are things that God does for your own sake. Did you hear what I said? There are some of you now, you are in certain levels of blessings and favor. And in the name of honesty, you have nothing to do with it. Maybe your mother used to cook for pastors. Listen, no. Before you were born, your mother just said, Me, you am not a woman of God. But all I keep doing is if there is any pastor, I will make sure I cook for them. One day, she cooked for a man who was not a pastor. She cooked for a system. And he swore a blessing and said, may your children be great. Now listen, that looks like a pronouncement. It's more than a pronouncement. And now you showed up. And when Satan is supposed to destroy you, between you and the destruction, the pronouncement comes in between you. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. The same way, Noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servant shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today 
Now, people are following from America and the rest, and I don't mean to insult you, but you see the level of spiritual depravity that is in America, the decadence, right? That when you put sex on phone, male of, or on a form, male or female, it's not only male or female that is there now, male, female, and then some others. Yet, in the midst of it, you expect God to be angry and stand up and say, America, your glory has been withdrawn. <sighs> Every time he wants to do that, someone's prayer stands. Every time the coming of Jesus was about to be delayed, the prayer of Anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit. Maranatha, come, come, come. I told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with God. She told the Lord, she said, Lord, my own father was a pastor. He died serving you. He said, please use either my brother, her younger brother now, or any of my sons to continue. Let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost. She thought it was just a casual prayer. And then I showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word that the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity is a grace that was given that you can drop an evil territorially is a grace. Any poor evil man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage. Listen, the north, and that includes the middle belt, the grace is the grace of leadership and governance. It's a grace. This is what the northerners take advantage of. They study these things, they don't just come out for election. They know that we are standing on an advantage. These are ordinances, my brothers and my sisters. In Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king. Are we together now? Leadership. So many times... When God wants you to be a spiritual leader, listen carefully. No matter where you are, in your voyage, you must touch the knot. No matter who you are. Listen carefully. This is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation 
with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. It is those who have the eyes that see, that know. Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it. There is a heritage that we have. A territorial heritage. An intellectual heritage. A spiritual heritage. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching... That you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated.
Aleluya. This is how we grow in the kingdom. We don't just grow by will. We don't just grow by luck. Listen, let me tell you this. This night, I just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people. It's not just that things are working anyhow. No. You see all this anointing, the power of God breaking out anyhow. It's not... There are systems of advantage. Your life must learn it, you must know it, and you must know how to engage it. Every Jew in Israel knows he cannot fail. Born again or not. Meet any Jew. Put any Jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening. No matter how foolish the decisions are. The wealthiest people in America today are Jews. The greatest brands in the world today, they are Jews. There is a history to the things we see. There is a reason why Boko Haram thrives in the north. They go outside the north, they will fail. North is the seat of governors. There is an advantage in the territory. They know this by divination. The east is always a place associated with wisdom. The magi, wise men came from the east. It's true. The wickedness came from the seat of governance. Herod wanting to kill Jesus. So it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the north. The seat of governance. And strangely enough, the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival arises. Hmm. That is the reason why you see the moves of God. Ministries like Koinonia. All these things are not, they are not guessings. They are pieces of a divine puzzle. <laughs> are we together? Many of you are looking at me dumbfounded. Let's round up by one last prayer. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that I am under the grace from Christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what I stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant. Please pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why the Holy Spirit decided to move this way? To share this? These are not things I share in a general meeting like this. These are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders. I don't know why God decided to allow this thing. That's why I say, please get it and listen to it. You will think you understood what I said. No. Your spirit man only appreciated what I said. You will need to settle down. Because you will hear something from that message. That will control your results. 
and open you up to the next season this is how i live my life i never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage this world is too wicked you don't guess your advantage on the battlefront it's too risky tomorrow i'm on my way to lagos again i came back from kogi state yesterday there is an advantage i stand upon that gives me security over death my life is a very risky life if you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule and all you say is i know god will protect us one day you will land in trouble i am a giver as a person is both an office a hobby a desire and a responsibility and i know that the way i give is not recommended for an average person i'm telling you this you give that way you will have problems with your wife your husband your children that means there must be an advantage this is more than financial intelligence there must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work should do. If you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday, only returned yesterday, had to rush, come for school of ministry, and all today I've been busy doing a lot of things I'm here now this night as soon as I'm done I'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two three hours heading back home barely have time to sleep tomorrow I'm heading to Lagos straight into the morning session of a meeting and yet Tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if I've not collapsed it's not just because I'm wise there is something you must stand on There must have been something God told you or God told someone you are under or God connected you to there has to be something there are ministries who don't understand this they are anointed but they pay every bill by themselves they never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage there are some of you you have never been helped by anybody you have not lacked but you don't know what it means to be assisted our lives are full of systems of advantage there was something on jesus that made simon of cyrene to be close by there was something in jesus that made joseph of arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb look at me please i'm rounding up i know i'm taking your time we're rounding up now any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone there is a spiritual replacement for it listen let me comfort you that means whatever your father should be please i'm not getting you emotional if your father here if you've lost your father or you've lost your mother or you've lost any sibling or you've lost a destiny helper i'm bringing you a word of hope that every physical thing that they should do there is a remedy in the spirit if it does not happen to you it is because you do not know this dimension of god that means you are saying i'm an orphan apostle and the only child no father no mother there is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal aside from the bodily connection of a father a mother are we together now there are some of you who lost your physical parents and god carried you and came and planted you in koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as i as fatherhood that means it is your responsibility to go back to God and say, Lord, because of my faith, I left my loved ones. Now I am in Zaria all by myself. I don't have an earthly father. 
I don't have an earthly mother or I have a father, mother. Some of you here, please don't feel bad. I am rounding up, but I'm speaking by the spirit. Some of you here are single moms. You have your children, something happened, maybe your husband died or ran away. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. And humanly speaking, you are supposed to be disadvantaged. But the Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you. There are systems of advantage. Apostle, I graduated with a third class. Or I never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place. And the truth is, at my age, knowledge is not a waste. But sincerely, at my age, the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again. There is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are as though you did not have any disadvantage this is the excellency of working with god so this is a word of hope don't sit down feeling bad just because your husband died or your wife died or your mother died most times we cry for two reasons number one because of the earthly connection oh how he loved him that's what they said when jesus wept at the grave of lazarus but the second reason is because of the space and the vacuum that their absence creates and i'm speaking to you as a man of god by the spirit that there is an advantage in the kingdom that you can tap into you can outsource an advantage to correct the anomaly that the absence of these personalities have caused in your life so in as much as it's good to have an expectation you must know that more than my expectation he is able the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think so god's ability is limitless we establish the fact that every possibility in the kingdom comes from his divine power that means the active agency that is responsible for results in this kingdom it is not his word it is not faith it is his divine power please understand faith and the word are instruments that convey his divine power that the active ingredient the force behind the performance of god is his divine power the bible says his divine power hath given unto us all things that means there is nothing that is outside of the jurisdiction of his divine power to provide are we together so if you are healed the agency that brought that healing is his divine power if you are lifted tonight like you will be it comes from his divine power if god opens a door if he smashes obstacles no matter what it is whatever happens in your life that can only be done by god was sponsored by his divine power are we together now so we're establishing this please get the teaching yesterday the dynamics of the anointing please please get it it is very important that your understanding about how the power of god works is straightened and accurate i shared something yesterday i might repeat a little bit of it this morning or this evening really but then the goal is to get us to solidify our understanding it's a very simple principle but if you do not have it you may never see the power of god at work are we together now yes so his divine power hath given us all lifting all healing all speed all restoration are we together now all energizings all deliverances his divine power because for many years you see from preachers to members to elders in the faith we have not exactly understood the dynamics how the word of god how faith and how the anointing synergizes themselves together to produce a performance in believers so we have those who believe in what they may call the word we have those who believe in what you may call faith we have those who believe in what you call the power of god 
and none of them is wrong because the results show they must be doing something right are we together now yes the divine power of god is the central working force that bets his ability in the life of people and over their situations the word of god listen like i taught you faith you know comes from the word of god your conviction of it are we together now faith is derived from the word of god that means that god has made several propositions in scripture according to his integrity is a manifesto of what he is able to do are we together now so he's proposing to the saints that for trusting me these are the possibilities that can accrue to your life so it's up to you by the ministry of the holy spirit to come to a point of conviction are we together now when you come to that point of conviction then you are mandated to demonstrate your conviction through an action of obedience the name given to both the conviction and the action you take is faith if you are convicted and do not act in compliance with the condition that makes for that result you have believed but you are not in faith is it simple enough are we together now that means that faith is not only resident within the heart it starts with the heart but there must be a step that is taken to honor your conviction understanding has come to you when you know your role in the equation of your results if you do not know the role you have to play in the equation of your result you do not understand it this is very important but the word of god please listen is the agency by which faith is built it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god it doesn't necessarily mean just hearing a voice that means that there is a system of interaction with your spirit man when you are exposed to whether the written word or the spoken word if it's the word that comes from god it sustains an ability to rest upon your spirit full of god's convictions the bible is full of his propositions this is what i can do and then you prove it by saying lord i trust you so the word of god itself i'm careful to say this now because i don't want it to make to sound like the word of god is not powerful it is powerful but it is powerful because it is the carrier and the container of his power are we together now the anointing follows the word of god wherever the word of god goes that's where the anointing goes so if the word of god goes in the direction of healing his power goes in the direction of healing if the word of god goes in the direction of lifting his power goes in the direction of lifting but i said something yesterday that i will establish quickly for the purpose of the impartation that would happen later that our limitations or the inability to see the fullness of god's power is caused by two factors yesterday i attempted to establish that number one the nature of the operation of the anointing is that just because you are anointed does not mean everything can be done the anointing works like money are we together now that every level and every dimension has a spiritual price tag the possibilities that can be purchased at that level if you have 10,000 naira there are certain things you can obtain with that amount are we together now you cannot obtain anything higher than 10,000 so I gave an example yesterday come doctor I gave an example yesterday that if I am a man of God and I have let me use for the purpose of example say 100,000 naira worth of anointing watch this I hope you understand why my, my example when this gentleman comes to receive from me under god god is limitless his power is limitless the holy spirit is unlimited are we together now but remember the possibilities are according to the power that works not lives in me are we together now then when i pray for this brother father bless him father lift him the level of grace that i have 
are we together now we scan through this man's life and only solve the problems that are within the grace oh dear i'm just spotting him please let's honor the pastor of second equa here may the lord honor you sir i cannot but honor you thank you surprise surprise thank you god bless you so much sir hallelujah are we together so this man has he's in need of restoration watch this now he's in need of speed he's in need of lifting he's in need of deliverance he's in need of healing he's in need of impartation of a supernatural grace say the gift of the spirit it is only the problem that is within the level of the anointing i have that will be solved he may fall down he may roll under the anointing he will get up with some cases solved and others not solved this is the reason why being anointed once is not enough you must strive to grow in glory because you get to a point where every challenge that is brought is within the level of your grace that's when you become a blessing so the bible says it this way how god anointed jesus you see that now the secret of his going around doing good was not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed when you read isaiah chapter 47 it begins to show us the dimensions of the progressions of the anointing in the life of a person and the possibilities that can happen at every level ezekiel the prophet was in a vision and he began to see a river that flowed from the east side of the temple and then it was to his ankle then it was to his knee it was to his loins and then it was a river that he could not flow through it and the bible says whatever contacted that river at that level every fish that was dead came alive there are certain conditions and levels of the anointing where certain results are activated all results are not activated at every level if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the reason why the apostles will minister and sometimes they will honestly admit that this level of grace is not at work in their life and they will go and outsource for other dimensions of the spirit to continue from where they've stopped are we together i believe and i am convinced that the sons of skiva had succeeded in some level of deliverance at one point or the other i do not want to believe that was their first trial the level of confidence reveals that they must have gotten some results so they said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and hear the response of the demon jesus i know you see in other words the demon is saying i know who i am i'm not stupid i know the level of grace that can get me out here i know that jesus has it i know that paul has it but i don't know where you are standing and you see this is it so if you can if you can't pray for me and get me free then i will pounce on you you see it now it's a it's a big risk to be anointed at a very low level because you will not see the need to press for more of god and then you will believe that just because the anointing is there just like money just because you touch the back of your pocket and there's something there does not mean you have what it takes to purchase the things that you want so this is what we identified as the number one reason why we may not be able to obtain certain results and you know the level of grace and anointing at work in your life by the testimonies that recycle around your life and ministry the testimonies that recycle around your life are a testament they are proof that this is what the grace you have can produce are we together number two we discussed yesterday if you remember very carefully that the second um revelation that we must understand on the dynamics of the anointing is that your understanding is what structures the efficiency of the anointing listen carefully that means that it is not enough to be anointed the dimensions and the possibilities that the anointing produce is where your understanding takes it to i gave you an example yesterday that the anointing is likened to a reservoir of water are we together and your understanding is like the host wherever you channel the water to it will go 
the pressure and its ability to give life is not in doubt but the various areas that will partake of that water is governed by this host call your understanding that means listen that means that if all i know is the dimension of god that heals every time i pray for someone the only dimension they will see in their life is healing my understanding will continue to push the anointing to manifest as the healing power of god so if the person is looking for prosperity for instance i will pray for the person but you will find out that he will be healed but not prosper and the reason is because the moment i sustain an understanding of the economic system of god then the power of god can follow that new pathway to heal his finances are you getting what i'm saying now yes so if i do not understand the principles that make for restoration after a delay i can come and say in the name of jesus be restored no the anointing will want to follow the path of restoration but understanding has not opened the channel so the anointing is limited and it will be forced to follow the path that is currently open and if that part is healing or whatever it is then you see it there that means that you are efficient in the dispensing on the, of the power of God to the degree to which you sustain understanding of God's ways, his methodologies. Hallelujah. So in my example, like I gave, every time there was delay in a man's life, restoration came exclusively through the prophetic. Are we together now that means that if i want the power of god to bring restoration to this man the power of god must flow through the prophetic to produce that effect if it flows through any other channel it may bless the man but not restoration are you getting what i'm saying now that means that if i want restoration i will create a pathway of the prophetic for the anointing to come and bless this man this is very very powerful because most believers um and this is the reason why you may want to reason this with me for a while that our fathers respectfully speaking and all those who have gone to be with the lord a number of them did not pay the price to get illumination and spiritual enlightenment are we together they subjected themselves in much fasting and prayer and they had very heavy deposits of the anointing but you notice that with the level of anointing they had their results were small because the understanding that will give that anointing expression to manifest in the various facets of their lives were not there we went to second kings yesterday and we saw how that the problem was not the oil the problem was the vessels the vessels if there is a vessel of the understanding of the healing ministry and it is filled the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of prosperity the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of church growth the church will grow if there is a vessel of speed etc etc so it's not enough to be anointed that's why jesus mentored people by giving them over 99 percent teaching they sat under a strong teaching ministry and then in one day they received an impartation we reverse the case in our generation we are always doing impartations we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up but the results do not change because the understanding that gives it expression is not there notice that for such people who have been receiving impartation for many years the day they get any light the result is almost instant because it's like the anointing has been piling up just waiting for the doorway that opens for it the walking knowledge of the power of god i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine 
that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with god and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river shabakataya flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping lord will you touch me and in five minutes you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension his divine power his divine power please hear me whatever issue of concern it is the divine power of god that is able to produce it we're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain our disappointments our frustrations our expectations my assignment as a man of god is to bring your challenges face to face first with god and then his divine power and then if i can do that i finish my assignment my assignment is to connect your situation with the power of god and get out of the way and then you watch the wonder working power of jesus when you don't get out of the way you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power so the assignment of an anointed man of god as it were is to allow the lord to use him by the spirit of god to connect the challenges of people to his divine power if you can do that a miracle service has started hallelujah and so then it becomes it becomes mandatory upon us men and women of god to study the systems that can help us connect the power of god to people's problems like you connect a, a a fuse to a socket and switch it on you finish yours and the gadget begins to work it works for as long as that connection is there mm. hallelujah praise the lord so let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with it is his divine power mm. his divine power remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony just like that in the twinkling of an eye someone's life changes the twinkling of an eye a grace you did not come here with goes back with you a twinkling of an eye a challenge that you have had that has been age long listen let me tell you don't get too used to the hand of satan on your life just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted you tried lifting it with different graces so they did their best but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your result it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of naaman you need to know how to go to jordan to wash all results are not produced by the same strategy it is the same divine power but your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it 
Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you praise the Lord that's how it works so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else jesus the possibilities is it true oh god that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and lord i don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go it's done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river i thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of god are not like the ways of men jesus was speaking to nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of god you have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow riding on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer we would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection I am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing 
if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor I will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real i testify i testify that your goodness is real and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did to sarah as he has spoken trust in the lord how do you trust in the lord take cognizance of his benefits be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust A testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that god is able take your eyes away i repeat take your eyes away please take your eyes away from anything that is not jesus tonight and focus apostle they've prayed for me 
a prophet just like you prayed for me an apostle just like you prayed for me a pastor even conducted night vigils in our house i know and i respect god and i respect the grace upon that man except that one more thing i did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you the man must be sent there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent when the word of god passes you it does not bless you it is when it is sent he sent not brought he sent forth it was when the king sent for joseph that his life changed when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you moved around when i sent thee because every time he sends it his integrity is upon it tonight god is sending his word to me to you to us the word that lifts the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life i would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight it is important God is giving you understanding now when I came into the house of the Lord then understood I the house of God is Bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken two men met Jesus in M house and they began to discuss the Messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the Bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed My assignment is to continue to study continually by the spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of God's power the power of God can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget Amen. it doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when I'm using only bread and cup? The power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem. And whatever comes out of it can produce any result. A handkerchief and an apron is not even alive. Talk more of having faith. But when his divine power comes upon it, it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders. The air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of God, then it is no longer the words of men. John said, I am the voice of one. So when you hear me, you hear that one. 
hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast Shananda Prakatos. Go ahead and pray, please. Inside, outside. Lift your voices and pray. Are you praying? Lord, I believe it is your divine power. Now I know how the results will come. Your divine power. I know how the lifting will come. Your divine power. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Hey. shadow of your wings your influence is all over us we are under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over us yeah. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Seneca Tabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Seneca Prash. And the Legabrande Zedica Shobragada Baladabash. Krato Zazigada Barunde Ketosh. Embrakato Zaleke Pradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Variada Baladabash. Rakatu in this kemeritash. Rakaparuda siada baladaba. He barando shele karusia da baladaba. Please keep praying. hallelujah John chapter 6 John chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 John chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh not is like my flesh is my flesh which i give for the life of the world 52 and the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat 
the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you stop here just just go back just go back this is what he's saying that in the flesh of the son of man and in the blood of the son of man is his life that the life of the flesh is in the blood are we together now listen very carefully so that when you partake please keep that scripture when you partake of it with understanding the bible says that you are not just taking a wafer you are not just taking a drink but that you are you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of god next verse 54 whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had i told you the word there is not eternal life is the word so way it's not the longevity of the life but the quality of the life and i will raise him up on the last day 55 we're stopping at 56 for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed the last verse he that eateth my flesh this is it and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means come look at this emeka come watch this if this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong his strength is her own too you understand that are you getting me not part of his strength his strength so if you say she's strong you are right are we together now this is very important now that means that when she's strong and he's weak her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just tear open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the Christ please pray by wisdom oh God heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing but i can't Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words brings in the evening. 
Please pray in one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary welfare and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. He didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here. I decree, O oh God, that in a very strange way, may your power flow through this in the name of Jesus. Let it bring miracles. Let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of Jesus. Whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of Jesus, I declare instantly, may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen. Let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus. Let deliverances, let devils and demons begin to leave. Let doors begin to open. In the name of Jesus Christ. My flesh is meat indeed. We partake with understanding. We partake with understanding. Please make sure everybody, something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this. You will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion. Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-walking power. The wonder-walking power of Jesus. The wonder-walking power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Whoa. Ah! Uh -huh. 
Rabalaka Paracato Sasia Rata Paranda Seketeleka Paracato. Patient tonight, God is setting people free. When there is understanding to your spiritual activity, then the power is released. The power is released. You will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already. Shalaka parura seketa. My flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now, I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd, inside and outside, everybody under any kind of bondage, I decree be free now. Be free now. I command judgment on strange spirits in the name of Jesus. The spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Listen, we are still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. 
the Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school, it doesn't make any difference. You can get a job, it doesn't make any difference. Have a business, it doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now, the power of God is coming upon you. It's time for your family to be released. At the count of three, one, two, three, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I lose your family. I set them free. I set them free. Shamanda Kaskabarakata. Embre Keteka Paroto Seteka. Zeketeketeketekete. Zebaka Proske Baru Zasia. Embra Katalakato Zasia Rakata. surely there is an end the bible says surely there is an end even weeping endures only for a night i declare freedom on those families now i declare freedom don't be distracted just pay attention please you rise to a level and then you crash back it's a pattern that exists in families there's nothing wrong with rising keep rising but you plateau at a level and then you crash back I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus. I release such people right now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. overflow three please lift your hands the lord is showing me something happening in overflow three overflow three please lift your hands mighty god mighty god i see a lot of attacks serious attacks on overflow three i don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there i'm seeing a lot of attacks at the count of three overflow three I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there. Overflow three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside the gate of a prison like the front of a prison and i remember scripture says to open to set at liberty them that are bound there are people who are moving but are in prison all sorts of prisons right now i decree and declare even by the power of the holy ghost let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven leaves, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus, release their families. Release their spiritual lives. Release their finances.
Parados is a hasaka parodasia. Lembra getos kalarishas. Hebras kodash. Prakato barado zaziana katabaladash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this row, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here. And I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here. Something is being removed out of people's stomachs. That's what the Lord is showing me. Just this row. I don't know what it is, but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the Spirit of the living God. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I place the word of God upon that situation. It must let you go right now. The Lord is taking something out. I still continue to see this vision. God is taking something out of people's stomachs. The spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. I'm seeing the feet of a man and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains. Under chains. This is what I see. And the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet. I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families. And I declare right now according to that which the Lord has shown me in the name of Jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the Holy Spirit right now something is happening to people I decree I decree and I declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty I command progress to your life move forward I push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress i forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now those who are fine up here can return to their seats I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people you don't have to bring the people out I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer and my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings, and like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy.
please someone should join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life. If not that it happened, I know there is advancement and I know there is speed. But I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter. Truly, let me tell you, there is a real grace for speed. And when that grace comes on you, you will join the world in shock. As to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer. The reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer, people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit. I don't know why it happens that way. Be sensitive, please. And then it is of the spirit. Please don't ask me why it happens that way. But if you will let me pray this prayer tonight, God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month i know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments i decree and declare by the privilege of god's grace i stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father i pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three, come upon someone. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I shift you. Speed. 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 Speed to your spiritual life. Speed to your finances. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed upon your influence. This is a major answer to your prayer. I declare it again. Speed. Speed. Receive it. Receive it. It is not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of God. You can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit. And do things that eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard. I pray it again. Those outside receive it. Those outside receive it. I declare speed. In the similitude of Elijah. You will run and you will overtake the chariots of Ahab. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually this woman you are seeing as frail as she may look but the hand of god will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of god with power i stretch my hands upon you and i pray that the spirit of god will perfect let there be a bathing a bathing of the things that he has begun upon your life a bathing of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands i don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that god is bringing upon your life 
number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what i hear number two this speed that you see i prayed for is coming upon you i stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca Please, when you find the person I want to talk to her in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick Kai. this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you Confirm it. Mama, your name is Rebecca. Where are you? From outside? I will pray for you now. I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I want to pray for you. The Lord is going to honor you. I decided to take a pause because um, the Lord just asked me to stand here. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because I saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain yes, yes, this is what i'm true. seeing you it's get up true, in the morning and, true. and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's chest true around the breast yes, region here. the lord is setting you free right now madam in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ ah! i just had like a car crash in my ears you know how an accident just happens right now this is what i just had in my ears and that the family that that should happen for is in this place i'm going to pray right now be free now i command death you are a spirit i judge you by the god of heaven and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i want to pray for you madam in the name of jesus christ that god himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh? here. your children are here yes. where are they Patient. Isaac. Patient Isaac. Sarah. this may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick there's a lot patience and Isaac now only glow no day here let me just pray for you if, if you are the only one who can represent them stand up please my friend mama i will pray for you in the name of jesus christ because i'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the lord himself is bringing it so a very major breakthrough i have no business saying anything god did not tell me i've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well-watered garden 
that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something. They will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach. I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one. Oh, please hold on. There is a growth. There is a growth. There is a growth. This has been characterized by extremely painful. Your period is extremely painful. But more than that, there is a growth just around your abdominal area overflow one you don't have to come out the power of god is touching that person right now in the name of jesus christ my dear in jesus name by the spirit of the living god we declare your liberty complete total final in jesus name i pray praise the lord now we're going to pray for the sick Praying for the sick takes a lot of time. Our time is already gone. I, I bless God that there are a number of hands tonight. Now, listen, we believe in the power of God to touch people, to lift people. And most times you would notice in my external ministrations, I don't have time to minister to people one by one. But because this is a miracle service dedicated for that. The Lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city. And it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of God extend to people. We'll do it very fast. Um, all of the overflows, all of the overflows, I would request that you just move those trusting God for healing particularly. Please, I would request that you move to the front of your projector screen. That's where you are going to be prayed for. Um, the ones that spill over, do I call that overflow five now? I will just request you to be patient. We are going to assign a person or two there to minister to you. But overflow four, three, two, one, and right in here. You are here, you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself. Please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the God of heaven to set you free. You are here full of faith. Please stand up, please stand up. If you kneel, there will not be space. Just come, stand. It doesn't matter. You don't have to come in. If you're outside, just go to your overflow. Please. Hallelujah. Myself, alongside the men and the women of God represented here, will be praying for you. Look how many people are trusting God to touch them. Hallelujah. Now, please. You don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak. Just let them minister to you. If there is need to speak any words, they will let you know. Praise the Lord. There are so many people this night, and so we we'll do our best so we can gain time. And just, just line everybody here, and then we'll pray for you. Praise the Lord. Pray for just be patient and allow the men of God minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um, you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here, let the men of God minister to you. If you are still being ministered, to just focus on the ministration. But then for all others, just stretch your hands towards me. And let's agree that these Egyptians we see today, 
that we will see no more please agree release your faith and believe we are praying we may not be able to prophesy to you personally we may not be able to give you a word of knowledge but this is a representation of your heart your pain your desire your expectation the bible says and thine expectation shall not be caught short stretch your hands and let's agree there is a god that answers prayers you someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we are declaring as the church we are releasing an anointing the divine power of god upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations but unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of jesus we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people we decree and we declare makratos kalambra de keparuza ziakata bradiash ile pereto zaziakata baranda gadash kritos kalabara gadabala nabosh shalabaranda kapuros likete kete baradabash we decree and we declare manda prados kaziza hashkala baranda kata belekatos arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy give your people testimonies in the name of jesus jiprakatos kalabarakata believers pray we are agreeing likato janana katabarados jabros katabaranda kata supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power hela barakata sosa brande gedebash lord in the name of jesus we declare supernatural walkings of miracles tonight we declare healing miracles we declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus. We declare supernatural interception. Angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles. Diverse walkings of miracles. In the name of Jesus. We declare creative miracles. We call new organs. We call new jobs. We call for children. We call for deliverances of families. We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles. By the divine power of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your, the heavens are open in the name of Jesus. We thank you for creative miracles. We thank you for money miracles. We thank you for supernatural deliverances. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request 
here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus. Special miracles in the name of Jesus. Diverse kinds of testimonies in the name of Jesus. Angelic interventions in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies in the name of Jesus. Great open doors in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on. Always looking for people to prophesy on. So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. The grace, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. The grace that makes for a new level of visions. People have lost visions in the body of Christ. We tell lies that we are seeing, but we are not seeing anything. Father, the eyes that see genuine visions, let there be a restoration. Let that mantle fall upon someone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit, the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit, receive it now in the name of Jesus. That prophetic river locked up within your spirit in the name that is above all names. The grace for the prophetic in a new dimension. Who is this grace coming upon? Upon all flesh, he says, I will pour out my spirit. Receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus. I believe in miracles and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders I'm stretching my hands I'm seeing a dove this is what I'm seeing just like a bird hovering round in the name of Jesus Christ upon as many whose hearts are open father the anointing the real anointing for signs for wonders inside outside especially upon men and women of god i decree and declare let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now in the name of jesus fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group i say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of jesus The spirit of wisdom. There is a spirit of wisdom. It says, Doth not wisdom cry? Wisdom speaking says, With me are. Uh, it says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, With me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. I declare the grace to know what to do 
is called the spirit of wisdom the grace to know what to do let it come upon you right now let it come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now please help those under the anointing talabarus kanamahashanas ratakapalusas yadash I want to release favor the grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom there is a grace for favor I testify to you people of the living God there is a grace for favor it is not of him that run it nor of him it is not of him that that um, run it what's the scripture we net not of him that run it but of the Lord that showed mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion and the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her yea the set time favor will take away hardship from your life not just financially even spiritually i decree and declare receive the grace for favor it's coming upon you receive the grace for favor receive the grace favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business in the name of jesus every geography has its favor may the favor associated with your geography if it was on the rocks the king built on the rocks it was an advantage if it was the sea they channeled the water for productivity every territory has access to favor i declare that the favor a portion for your territory let it rest upon you right now i want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this I confess to you sincerely under God that by the privilege of God's grace I'm a student of the word but I can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you I'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of god verbatim i declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness i believe there is a grace for wealth i believe it i believe there are principles for wealth i believe there are understandings that can bring resources but i believe there is a grace there is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings when that grace came upon saul three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one in the name that is above all names in this season that god has ordained for the body that in addition to the prosperity of our souls in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus i believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it 
don't touch this one there is something upon it i decree and declare let the mark that exempts men from terrorism from kidnapping from assassination from accidents the grace that exempts receive it right now for you and for your family receive it right now receive it right now i declare that whatever you have lost coming here it doesn't matter how long please believe release your faith right now in the name of jesus christ i command a sevenfold restoration i command a sevenfold restoration restoration of anointings of money of ideas of relationships of access of illumination in the name of jesus i pray for every ministry represented here whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders i declare by the power of the spirit shift to a new dimension shift to a new dimension of teaching of the miraculous of the demonstration of the spirit in the name of jesus christ i will multiply them they will not be small i will glorify them they will not be few whatever keeps you small in the name of jesus i decree and declare that power is broken over you now all those trusting god for jobs yeah you are trusting god you have agreed with god and said lord said to me give me an honorable job i release my faith with you and i decree and declare in the name of jesus that by this time next month let it please the lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business father the grace that came upon tyre and sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth i decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value the grace the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ i speak to every dying business here hear the word of the lord come alive now in the name of jesus everyone trusting god for the fruit of the womb in the name of jesus whether for you or for your loved ones we agree by the power that put jesus in the womb of mary in the name that is above all names is called the power of the highest that can put a seed in the womb of a woman and keep that seed until it delivers may that grace and that power come upon you now we cause barrenness we cause impotency in the name of jesus whoever has what it takes to favor you the bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power i declare whoever has the power to support you the power to help lift you we compel them by the spirit to favor you in the name of jesus christ and i pray in the name of jesus we're rounding up the prayer and fasting many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually i declare the fire of prayer that can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of jesus every attack on your prayer life let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now in the name of jesus christ receive the grace to travail receive the grace to pray any 
evil and wicked company and association around your life you are not free till your association is free i declare to you you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people who do not fear god i declare a separation between you and the wicked I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying Lord what is the next step in this season should I stay here or should I go the Bible says and thine ear shall hear a voice listen let me tell you one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return I declare accuracy of perception in the name of jesus christ that the god of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of jesus the last prayer point and we are done thou shall anoint aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows this is not in a competitive manner but I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men from the crowd may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. Let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life, we release them. Listen, listen. Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain. It returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place. Then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive an almond tree, an olive plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established i pray for you every long-standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life i declare right now in the name of jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now. Anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed, may God answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting. I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face. Return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God. Return with the signs, the wonders, the transformation, the illumination. Return with the evidences of an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
our time is gone i sincerely apologize but we thank the lord for the encounter tonight you will leave to testify very quickly please let's let's settle down very quickly please just help that woman so she doesn't injure anyone there are people here please listen overflow one two three four online there are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight and whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the things that the lord did in this place the holy spirit began to convict you that you need jesus jesus is not an idea jesus is not something and someone you can do without i believe with all my heart that and please prepare to clear the way for them overflow one two three if you're at the door please shift there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle if you will make an altar call i need jesus i need him desperately i need him truly there are others who are saying i love jesus but for whatever reason i need a restoration and i need my life back with him whether you belong to any of these categories please inside and outside i'm only going to count five don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here it will be my joy and delight to lead you to jesus don't wait for someone to come before you be the first i'm counting one come quickly come quickly koinonia let's honor them let's motivate them as they come please clear the way for those who are coming from outside two apostle I'm, I'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them join them join them join them i come from a christian family am i born again no sir join them i have very good friends am i born again no sir join them The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Today, if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are anyone's coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight I receive your life I receive your grace and I declare please help them and I declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever Jesus is my Savior is my Lord is my friend I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katapranda Katekos. Katapranda Katapakotos Kotopre Kateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.